Good morning and welcome to our inaugural IRTA webinar. Our educational series is going to kick off today. Thank you for joining us. My name is John Green with Association Member Benefits Advisors. I want to do a couple of quick housekeeping details before we get started here today. All participants are in a listen only mode and what that means is is that we can't see you, we can't hear you, but if you do have a question that you'd like to ask of the association or about some of our topics today, you can simply drop those into Q&A and Nathan and Gary and Larry and I will monitor those. If it's something specific to your situation, we'll probably answer that directly back to you via the Q&A feature. If it is something that the whole group could benefit from, then we'll stop the conversation and answer those questions periodically throughout our conversation today. We do record every one of these sessions and we'll make it available after the, uh, the, the webinar, probably sometime late this week, first of next week on the IRTA website for members. That way you can pull it up and you can share uh, and, uh, and be able to, to you know, cover this with your family members, with the spouses or friends, or this is a great way to introduce one of your um, uh, maybe potential IRTA members to join the association because of the, the, the benefits that they receive from being an IRTA member. You'll also notice this QR code down here in the bottom right hand corner. I want you to have your smartphone handy because we're going to talk about some topics today that you may want more information on. And that's the best way to get that started there as we go forward. So before we get started, I want to bring in Nathan Mihilich with the, who is your Director of Membership and Marketing for IRTA to kind of share with us a little bit of what's going on in Illinois, Nathan. Well, thank you so much, John. And I just uh, wanted to let our members know that uh, we're happy you're here today. And uh, I would like to reiterate uh, just the great partnership the association has with AMBA. Uh, we work with them almost on a daily basis, and uh, they help us deliver the, the many benefits and services uh, that we offer through the association. So if there's a product or service that uh, you're interested in today, uh, you know, we put our faith in, in AMBA, and anytime there ever have been any questions, I know Gary and, and Larry and John on this call today, uh, uh, you know, there any of us are always a phone call away. So um, we're very pleased to be, again, partnering with AMBA and uh, doing this uh, series every month. And uh, again, if you do have any questions or comments, uh, type them into the chat and we'll be able to answer them. And if you do need, uh, if you do need help after the webinar, uh, we're just a phone call away at, at the state office. So it's good to be here today. Uh, looking forward to uh, hearing uh, hearing all about it. All right. Thanks, John. Thanks, Nathan. Real quickly, before I let you go, uh, legislative sessions are kicking off all across the country. Is there anything particular that you're working on in Illinois for your members this year? Well, we just uh, actually finished this morning a, a meeting with our legislative committee and uh, uh, currently, the association is uh, has a pending lawsuit, uh, an insurance lawsuit uh, against the state for 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 um, underfunding of uh, of the uh, the healthcare fund, and we're we're, we're working to see um, about either moving that legis or moving that lawsuit forward or rescinding it because of um, some of the steps that the government has taken uh, to 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 make part of that whole. Now, there's a lot of money owed. But the, uh, the association is still going to remain vigilant and make sure that, you know, that fund uh, and your health care your, and your benefits are there for, uh, you know, the rest of your life. Great. Thank you very much. Again, another power, the value of being a member at IRTA. Thank you, Nathan. Appreciate you joining us this morning. Nathan will hang on as well. If you've got questions or things like that, again, drop them into Q&A and we can answer those as we go forward. Again, my name is John Green. I'm with Association Member Benefits Advisors, and like Nathan is the Director of Membership and Marketing, my role is membership engagement to help you get the most out of your IRTA membership. Uh, I live a little bit north of Houston. My wife is a second grade teacher. She is, teaches in the same school that she went to, my three children went to. I have spent the better part of my 30 plus year career in classrooms, helping active educators understand what their retirement years are like. So I appreciate the opportunity to share with you today on behalf of AMBA some things that as we go through this webinar series this year, hopefully can benefit you, that you'll learn from, things maybe that you didn't know, ways you can take advantage of certain things as well. And we're going to talk about a lot of topics today. So grab a pen and paper, and we'll, we'll talk about the agenda in a moment. But just a quick reminder, Nathan talked about this as he was going uh, through his conversation a little bit. IRTA is there first and foremost to look out for those benefits that you worked for all your career taking care of our children, whether it be your pension, your health benefits, those type of things. 
That's what IRTA is there for, to make sure that you have those in your retirement years, the way that you anticipate those. And then keeping you connected to your local community and your units all across the state. One thing we found coming out of COVID was that we wanted to be back together again. And IRTA does a great job of that. And that's what AMBA and our team at AMBA, Gary, Nancy, and Larry, our leaders in Illinois, are there to help your units grow first and foremost, and to bring you valuable information that you can help invite people to your uh, to your unit meetings and learn more about the association, the benefits they have available to them, and become a member of IRTA to help that voice in Springfield. When it does become time for specific legislative or legal issues, there's a record number of people behind you and behind the association that are fighting for those benefits as well. And then when they partner with AMBA, as Nathan mentioned, to offer important benefits that are exclusive to you as IRTA members, discounts and things like that. And some of those things are related to your benefits. You may have had some benefits that you left at the school house whenever you retired. Benefits of having IRTA membership and AMBA together can fill some of those gaps that were covered whenever you left the schoolhouse. They're portable if you leave the state for whatever reason. Many IRTA members will winter down here in the South in Texas, in Florida or in Arizona. They're not tied to any network. You can move around and use those benefits how you see fit. Another huge benefit of being an IRTA member is you can extend your benefits to family members, whether it be your adult children who maybe have aged out of your benefits through the school or maybe to your parents. If your parents are still living, it can help them in their retirement years and their, in their, uh, their elderly years as well. And because we have so many teachers that will retire, what I would call relatively early in their lifespan, they'll go work another job, but they're still responsible for the care of their parents. And proper planning for your parents and for yourself can prevent a loved one from having to take time off from their career or possibly shorten their pension uh, growth years to take care of a loved one. So these are some benefits that you have of being a member of IRTA. So our goals today are to talk about some of the changes that just took place at the beginning of the year in Medicare, Social Security, talk about how those changes impact you as retirees, whether you're Medicare eligible now, whether you have state benefits, whatever those are, there are still four major gaps that Gary and Larry and I have identified that can uh, impact you and really trip you up as you go forward there. We're gonna share some financial tips just in general that you can act on immediately. We're going to talk about required minimum distributions because that is something that we get a lot of questions from retirees who are reaching into their 70s and some of the recent changes to those things. And then share with you some of the recent discounts that have just come out that are free to you as an IRTA member. But to help Gary and Larry and Nathan and I get a feel for who's on the call today, I want to launch a quick poll. This is a, um, a poll that is completely anonymous. You can answer multiple answers here, multiple responses. Every beginning of the year, we all make resolutions. And if you're like me, we're now around the middle of the month, and I kept about half of one of the ones that I've done. So just kind of tell us what your what resolutions you've made out there, and that will kind of help drive some of our conversation today as we go through here as well. So again, we appreciate you joining us. This is our very first IRTA webinar. We've got a series of 12 of these scheduled throughout the year. We'll share some of those at the end, but uh, we'll, we'll get to know you a little bit better as we go throughout here. If you've got questions, drop them into Q&A, drop them into chat, and we'll be able to, uh, to answer those for you as we go through here as well. So I'll keep this open for just a few more seconds here because we've got a great number of you who have participated, and we greatly appreciate that. So uh, we'll keep it open for about 10 more seconds. And we'll share those results and we'll get moving through our conversation today. And again, we are recording this webinar to put it out on the RTA website in the near future. So last call, three, two, one. All right, share the results here. Overwhelmingly, the number of you that are involved in health and fitness, that is our, our, our big conversation. We always like to do that as well. I'm going to show you some discounts and some ways you can take care of that this year. Financial next as well. So a lot of you are doing a lot of things, make great resolutions. Hopefully some of the things we're going to share with you today and we're going to send to you after this conversation, you can use to further these along as well. So thank you for participating, participating in our poll and we appreciate you joining us today. So we're going to jump in and just talk about some of the changes that have come up. Now, 
Medicare, Social Security, those type of things, depending upon your situation. Um, some of you may be eligible, some of you may not get as much because of web GPO issues and things like that. But as a whole, the uh, cost of living increase for Social Security went up 8.7%, which is about an average of $140 a month. Now, this is the largest change we've seen in many, many years. And at the same time, Medicare Part B payments decreased by about $5. So that was a pretty rare occurrence that you have one go up and one go down. Part of the reason why the Medicare Part B payments went down was back in 2021, there was a very promising study or a trial, I should say, for an Alzheimer's medication treatment. And so Medicare figured that there was going to be a significant amount of usage going into this year or going into 2022, and it was about $42,000 per treatment. However, the trial didn't go as they anticipated. It wasn't wide use, widely used last year. So going into this year, they didn't anticipate needing that medication or not say they didn't need it, but they weren't going to be paying for it because it wasn't proven yet. So that's why this decrease has dropped that way. And the Medicare Part B deductible has decreased as well by just a little bit. Now, this book, Medicare and You. Now, remember, I imagine most of you grew up, especially with Sears being in, in Illinois, home based in Illinois with that Sears Christmas catalog. And you'd get that as a child and you'd circle those things that you wanted, that kind of stuff. That's the exact way that Nancy and Gary and Larry and I do with the Medicare and You book. So we get that every Christmas. We go through it just like the Sears catalog. Our role and the role of our Amber representatives in Illinois is to be experts at this so that they help understand what are the changes, what are the coverage changes, because it's not just about pricing. It's also about other coverages. Sometimes they are adding things. Sometimes they're taking away things, shaving different benefits off things like that. This year, just a couple of quick reminders. Medicare is increasing the number of preventative and screening services that are covered, including vaccines. If you're a Part D participant, uh, that is the drug coverage, now includes shingles with no out-of-pocket cost and a big one for insulin-dependent Medicare participants. All expenses for insulin are capped at $35 a month, which is a biggie. This is something that those of you who are not on Medicare um, are not eligible for, but this is a first start in getting some of those insulin costs under control that way. And then there were a small number of Medicare beneficiaries that were involved in a data breach. And you're gonna be getting something from Medicare in the mail with new ID numbers and new ID cards if you haven't already got them already but I highly, highly encourage you, go out to medicare.gov, medicare.gov, and set up your free online account. This will help you understand what you're specifically eligible for, those type of things, as well as if you're involved in something like this data breach that doesn't happen very often, you'll be able to get uh, information on that right away by going out there and knowing that as well. Now, most people pay for Medicare at a fixed rate based on their income. However, that can change depending upon your income and depending upon what may have happened in your life. So if you had a life-changing event in 2022, such as a marriage or a divorce or a spouse passing away, then you need to file the SSA 44, Medicare Income Related Monthly Adjusted Amount. You can do this prior to filing your taxes. You can do it anytime throughout the year. What this does is says my income has changed for whatever one of these major reasons, these life-changing events that you see there. And so can you recalculate what my potential Medicare premium could be? So for those of you who are higher income earners, this could reduce your Medicare premium. For those of you who are paying the standard amount, it's possible that you could get it lowered even just a little bit more. So just a quick tip that can save you money on SSA-44. And again, you don't have to wait to file your taxes. You can do this at any time to reduce your Medicare premiums. Now, we're going to walk through some things talking about just your general health care plans in, overall, whether you're on Medicare, a Medicare Advantage plan, a state plan, your spouse's plan, private payer, doesn't matter. It pays to understand your co-pays, your deductibles, and your co-insurance clauses. These are things that can change every year. The federal government changes some of these in Medicare. The uh, um, private health insurance does. The state makes these changes. It's ways that they keep cost under control. Sometimes it's ways that they make their plans more or less attractive. Those things can change even if your premiums don't change. So oftentimes we see these things, oh, our premiums didn't change. Okay, that may be great, but 
some things may have changed inside the policy that can put you more to financial risk. One of those is called the OOP, or the out-of-pocket maximum. And we see this really in two areas, mostly with private care, uh, private payer or spouse's plan, something like that, or with Medicare Advantage plans, where they will come in and they will have a, your premium or your minimal premium, but then they'll raise the out-of-pocket maximum that could cost you more money if you do have to have care. So it's important to understand your plans as you go through looking this year. And to be a better healthcare consumer, we've kind of broken it down into five things. We talked about understanding your health insurance coverage. And this is so important because plans change all the time. And what was there last year may not be there this year. What is there this year could change in the middle of the year. Things change all the time. So understand your coverage to help maximize that. My mother is 82 years old. She has a Medicare Advantage plan, and sometimes I'll go over and check her mail, and she will get Visa cards, gift cards in the mail because she took advantage of certain perks and incentives. Depending upon your plans, you may have some of those out there that give you uh, incentives for mammograms, well woman checkups, things like that, or incentives to join different silver sneakers type uh, healthcare plans or health uh, Get, get fit plans and things of that nature as well. So help find those out, see what's out there, take a look at what you have options out there for you as well. And then also check around for services and look, ask for price transparency. The reason I say this is, especially if you're on Medicare or a Medicare Advantage plan, or even if you're on a plan that's got a tight network, there are many doctors who may perform the procedure in network, but a scan or a reading or a test may be done out of network and you could be hit with a surprise bill. So ask about those things. I was talking to my mother-in-law over the New Year's holidays, and she was talking about a doctor that she'd been going to for years, was a medic, her Medicare doctor, going to for years, and he bought a piece of equipment that could do a scan of some sort in his office. But he liked it because he could do it right there, get the results back, Medicare covered that scan, that procedure. Well, not too long ago, Medicare made a change that said this procedure this scan can no longer be reimbursed by Medicare unless it is done in a hospital setting. Well, that meant that his piece of equipment could no longer be used for Medicare procedures. That meant my mother-in-law had to go to a different hospital, something different to get that scan done. So ask about that within your doctor. When you shop around for services, ask about pricing, transparency, things like that. And then bottom line, don't skip that preventative care because that can head off a lot of more financial situation issues in the future if you do that as well. So that's a way to be a better healthcare consumer. Let's kind of go in and look at, and this is something that Nancy and Gary and Larry and I do every year. We sit down and we look at all the changes to Medicare. We look at a lot of major medical plans and we identify where those gaps are. We look at that situation that says if one of our IRTA members had a situation where would they be financially at risk? And we found four main areas that you have a significant financial risk if something happens to you. First and foremost is any type of home health care, long-term care, facility care, assisted living, whether it is as a result of an accident, a slip and fall, or a procedure, something like that, or just because the effects of old age, those things are not covered by Medicare and are not covered by private health insurance. Then you go into looking at the three major things that seniors have, cancer, heart attack, and stroke. Medicare is really pretty good about the initial treatment and the uh, diagnosis and the, uh, the procedures to eliminate some of those things. Where we see about 60% of the expenses related to the care after the diagnosis are not covered in these areas. And a lot of these are related to what I would consider very needed things such as anti-nausea medication, prosthesis, wigs, um, transportation issues, things of that nature, we find oftentimes that, that people don't have coverage because Medicare doesn't cover those things. I live in Houston. I fly all across the country. Many times I meet people from the Midwest who are flying from Illinois, from St. Louis, down to Houston to our great cancer centers to get treatment. Those things are not covered by Medicare, by private health plans, and for have somebody come travel with you, the hotels, the travel costs. So we find that's a pretty big, big expense that way. And then I also noticed this when I was visiting my son in Missouri, when he was going to school there, and then whenever I used to work in Springfield, 
I would drive from Springfield down to St. Louis. And you know all those cornfields in that area. Every once in a while, you see a helipad out there. And no matter what Medicare and private insurance does to try to regulate medical transportation, ambulance services, um, air ambulance, uh, uh, life flight, things like that, that cost continues to go up and up. And sometimes we're seeing, even for ground ambulances, thousands of dollars in cost that are not covered by Medicare. Or we'll find that Medicare says, you know what, you could have taken an Uber to the hospital. You didn't need to have an ambulance ride and they won't pay for it at all. That's what I love about Medicare is that their qualifying language says we may pay for it. Well, you don't know if you're going to may pay for it till after you've used it and then you're stuck on the hook for that. So medical transportation is another gap. And then final expenses are pure life insurance is not covered by neither Medicare nor our medical insurance. So there are some gaps out there. I'd encourage you at the end of the conversation today, I'm going to show you that QR code again. If you want to get your smartphone handy, Gary and Nancy and their teams can help you understand what is and isn't covered by your medical plan so that you're not left with a financial uh, lurch out there. So now let's move into some more financial ways to get healthy. Uh, a, good, a good portion of you out there said we want to get financially healthy in 2023. So we're going to talk about spending, planning and organizing. We're going to go through some insurance things, just some normal insurance things, and then talk about how to protect your nest egg. With the way the stock market is moving up and down, we want to make sure that your nest egg that you've saved up all your lives for is not at risk out there. So let's walk through some things. And really the three biggest things we're going to touch on initially are those three big budget items, housing, transportation, and food. And we're going to kind of give you just some trends that we're seeing out there of ways that retirees are utilizing or doing in these three areas to save them or make them money out there. In the area of housing, we always hear about, well, you can downsize. Well, sometimes downsizing is not so easy because it's where you've grown up, you're close to family, friends, and things like that. But we're seeing a little bit of a trend in downsizing because the house, housing prices have cooled off a little bit. Although interest rates are up, and that's driving some of that cooling cool down of the housing prices, this may be a time if you're looking to downsize out there. House hacking is another trend that we're seeing. This is an interesting concept. Most everybody's familiar with Airbnbs, you know, putting a house into a rental pool, especially a secondary home to drive more income. Where we're seeing this with your primary residence is taking on a renter or a roommate, for lack of a better term there, from a safety perspective and from a small income amount. But we're also seeing this for individuals who have space in their garage or a storage shed out back. There are companies just like Airbnb and VRBO that will utilize your extra space to rent it out to someone to store a boat, a car, something else, things like that. And it's a way to make income. So that's just another way that you can drive money or save money with your home. When it comes to vehicle usage, we're going to talk about this more when we talk about insurance. If you've got an unused vehicle that you haven't used in a long time, used car rates are still pretty good. You may get a good uh, piece of money for that. If you don't need it as much, we're going to talk about how you can save money on insurance as you go forward in that regards. And then we all know that food prices are going up. One of the best ways that you can save on food prices is dining and with the passport discount programs that they offer. We're going to talk about that at the end. I'm going to send you a link. If you're not on the passport program that is offered by IRTA for all members from AMBA, this is free and can save you hundreds of dollars every year on all kinds of things that you use, including dining options as well. And when it comes to insurance, I just want to go through three quick ways that you can do a checkpoint, do a, co a coverage checkpoint, some things that you want to think about. When it comes to your auto insurance, look at your deductibles. You may have a small deductible, $50, $200, $250, something like that. Consider raising that to $500 or $1,000. It can save you some money that way as well. If you are driving less, if you go to your agent and say, hey, how am I rated for my insurance? They may still have you as going to and from work as if you were still teaching and going back and forth to the school. Many companies offer mileage use rating, meaning if you drive a very little amount, a minimal amount, you get a sizable discount. If you're no longer driving to and from work, your vehicle is just pleasure rated. You can use the coverage uh, discounts on that as well. So call your agent and ask him, how am I being rated out there? And there are some companies that offer affinity discounts for retired educators. 
So highly encourage you to ask your agent to shop around for you. But when you do shop around, please be careful because there are some companies who offer sizable discounts to people who come to them as a new customer, and then those discounts go away. But you may be leaving something on the table. You may have earned some claim-free uh, discounts. You may have left some claim forgiveness on your record, something like that, or some loyalty discounts. So shop around when you do that. Now, when it comes to homeowner's insurance, and I especially want to make sure that you pay attention to this, look at your replacement values on your home insurance. The reason is most people confuse the value of their home as what the insurance value is, or the tax records on your home as what your insurance value is or what you could sell it for. None of those three things are the same. The replacement value on your home is what it would cost for your home to be totally cleaned up and replaced if it burned down to the ground. So there's usually a higher cost to do that than just outright selling your home. The one thing we've noticed because of all the storms down in Florida this past year, insurance companies are going back and increasing the value of their homes that they have insured because they want to make sure that when a storm comes again, they've got proper valuations out there. So you check your coverage and your replacement value, double check that it hasn't gone up too much, ask your agent to review that. And especially look at your deductibles. And I think about those of you downstate from Chicago, hailstorms, tornadoes, things like that, that kind of roll through on a seasonal basis. You may have a type of deductible on your home that says, if a storm rolls through, you owe 2% or 5% of the damage, as opposed to just a general fire or something like that where you may only owe $1,000. So check your deductibles and make sure that you don't have differing deductibles and what those are so that you understand what they could be, because you want to make sure that when a storm comes in, you're not having a huge amount of money out of your pocket that way. But if you have made a major renovation, like replaced a roof, rewired your home, something like that, new appliances, you can get discounts for that as well. And look at bundling, putting your home and auto together when you shop around. But again, don't forget, some companies offer claim-free discounts. Some companies offer claim forgiveness on homeowner's insurance as well. One thing I do want you to write down, especially if you have a little bit older home, ask your agent about the type of coverage you have on your roof. There are several major companies, most of them, are housed in, uh, in Illinois, are headquartered in Illinois, a couple of the two biggies, that say if your roof gets over a certain age, it goes to actual cash value coverage. What that means is if you have a storm and your roof is actual cash value and coverage, that you won't get it replaced. They will just pay you a portion of what the roof is worth. That can make a big difference in your, uh, your out-of-pocket expenses that way. So again, check your coverages every year. Even if you don't switch, that's okay. Just make sure that you understand what your potential costs are out of your pocket. First of this year, all the football games were going on, the bowl games. I took, sat down, got out my life insurance folder, and I went through my policies for myself and my children. Do I still need those policies? Which ones are term insurance, meaning they're going to expire after a certain period of time? Or which ones are permanent, meaning that I'll keep them with me for the rest of my life? Also, you want to check on your policies and look and see, do they have a nursing home writer? Some policies been, that have been written in the past 20 years or so have a nursing home writer that could provide you coverage if you need to go to a nursing home before you pass away. So I highly encourage you to check that out if you want Gary or Nancy or one of their team members to go over those policies with you. I'll show you how to get that information back to them at the end of the conversation today. So check those out there because you still may have some options with your life insurance policies, even if you don't think you need them anymore. Okay, let's talk about getting organized from a financial perspective. I'm going to walk you through and I'm going to send you a document at the end of our conversation today that I call the in case of death or disaster folder. We've created this at my household for many years. It's in a plastic folder. We keep it in a certain place. I live close enough to the, the Texas Gulf Coast that we get hurricane evacuation notices. And I can pull that folder and we can leave at a moment's notice that way. I've used it with my wife when she went to New York. She had her wallet stolen with all of her documents in there. So I had the ability to call the credit card companies, contact the bank, fax up copies of her driver's license passport to help her get out of New York. 
So this can be used in a disaster situation or in case of death. I'm going to walk you through nine specific areas to start to pull these things together, and then I'm going to give you the document that you can do that with. But this helps you have conversations with your family, helps you get everything, your house in order financially, and help you be prepared in case something happens. So some of these nine buckets are life events, like your birth certificates, marriage certificates, things like that, your life insurance, and your retirement paperwork, okay? I want to go over this for just a, a few seconds here, a little more in depth. Your life insurance policies, you don't have to put those policies in the folder, but maybe just the cover sheet that shows the face amount, who to contact, and who your beneficiaries are. Please, please, please check your beneficiaries. Gary and Nancy and I have been out delivering life insurance checks in our career, where we have taken life in che insurance checks to the former spouse because the current spouse didn't change the beneficiary paperwork when they got divorced and remarried. That's never a fun conversation to have. Secondly, we've taken out checks to two of three children because that third child wasn't added on to the policy as a beneficiary. So check those things out there as well. Also check your and put your pension documentation in there. Make sure that whoever would receive your benefits after you pass away, what those are. Some of you may have selected your pension to be paid out. And once you pass away, there's nothing going to beneficiaries or it stays the same or it's reduced by 25% or 50%, whatever it is. Make sure you have those details in that ICOD folder. If any of you are still working for a company or for a, for a state agency or school that is offering pension, check your death in service documents. This could be for your spouse, a loved one, something like that, that explains what happens if you die while you were still employed because there are also certain other benefits that may come that way. So make sure you have that section of your ICOD folder squared away. Banking accounts, in the past, it used to be, you just have your checkbook registry with your numbers in there and that's all it needed. Well, now we've got so much online banking, put your password, your login information, credit card information, and safety deposit box information if you have that in there. My father-in-law's father passed away about five years ago and left him with an envelope with about 15 keys. The safety deposit boxes. No other notes, nothing like that. Please put on there what bank it goes to, what you anticipate being in those safety deposit boxes, things like that. All right, some more of those boxes or the, the categories I want you to start to put together, your assets, any land deeds, timeshare documents, things like that, your stocks, your 401ks, your 403bs, passwords, things like that, all those things out there your liabilities as well. If you still have a mortgage or a reverse mortgage, anything of that nature. One thing that we see biggest scams on seniors is after someone passes away, sometimes the family will be hit with these calls that says, your mom owed me this, this money. And they produce some really pretty fancy documents that look like that you owe them money. So make sure you've got the proof of liabilities that you can ward off scams and things like that. Your monthly expenses as well, you know, where the utility companies are, any loans, any memberships, subscriptions. At AMBA, we do the dental vision for most of the IRTA members. Every month we get calls from sons and daughters that say, hey, mom passed away six, seven, eight months ago. We didn't know she had dental or vision and was being drawn out of their paycheck or out of their, their bank account. Please, please, please have all those things there. It makes that uh, handling those final uh, documents and things like that very easy for your family and your loved ones. And then finally, the last three buckets I want you to take a look at, all of your social media accounts, your email accounts, cell phone, streaming services, Netflix, Disney Plus, stuff like that, and passwords, have all of those there so that it's easy for your loved one to take care of if you have become incapacitated or you pass away. Then your contact details. You're going to see on the checklist I provide for you places where you can put that information, who your accountant, your insurance broker, your Amber representative, doctor, minister, things like that on there, and then copies of or where to find the wills, the power of attorneys, things of that nature, and then maybe an instruction letter, what you want your final wishes to carry out there as well. So here's what I'm going to send you. Everyone on this call today, I'm going to send you a PDF copy of this that you can print off, start to create a folder, put it in a firebox, whatever you do, don't try to tackle it all at once. So like a good New Year's resolution, say every month or every week, I'm going to copy these things and put them in this folder. 
So these are the boxes that you'll have that you can go through and check these things off there. And you also have that QR code on there. If you need to talk to Nancy or Gary, you can simply use your smartphone, hover over that QR code, and one of them will get back in contact with you and just review your benefits, review your coverages that you have with IRTA and your pension and go through those things as well. So everyone on the call is gonna get a copy of this that you can start your New Year's resolution to get financially organized off on the right foot. Okay, this is a photograph of my mom and my daughter. My Christmas two years ago, my daughter just started student teaching about two weeks ago. So she's gonna be a teacher just like many of you are on the call. And I noticed my mother starting to repeat herself a little bit more and get a little bit more confused. She could remember stuff that happened when she was in kindergarten, but she couldn't remember what she just had done a few minutes ago. So I read an article that talked about how to start that financial conversation with your parents, whether that's you with your children or you with your parents. I want you to start asking these questions now. You know, where are those documents? Again, it goes back to that ICOD folder conversation. Can I meet with your advisors? You know, who's your banker? Who's your financial advisor? Who are your doctors and your medical professionals? One thing with my mother, as I told you, she's in a Medicare Advantage plan. She likes it because it's close. It's a hospital uh, network she trusts. What frustrates her is her doctors change about every four months. So she gets new cards in the mail. That confuses her. So who are her doctors? What pharmacy does she want to go to? And then we got into this conversations of if you can't take care of yourself, if you can't bathe or dress yourself, how do you want to be taken care of? Do you want someone to come in to live with you at home? Do you want to move closer to, to, to my brother and I with, with us? You go to a retirement community. How do you want to live? And then what are those conversations about end of life care and funeral plans? And when my mom and I were having this conversation, I found out she had purchased many years ago a burial plot about 350 miles north up in the little town where she grew up, you know, so just those kind of things bubble up in these conversations that you can have and make sure that your documents match what you, you wish or what your parents wish and have those conversations. One thing I'm going to send you is a link to this document. It's called Thinking Ahead Roadmap. This is from AARP. They do a phenomenal job in kind of thinking these things through that talk about how to choose your financial advocate. You keep control of your money. That's what we all want to control as, as much as possible, but how to organize that information, how to have that conversation with your family, your loved ones. And then as time progresses and the time takes place that you can't take care of your finances anymore, how to gradually shift that conversation and that management of your money with someone that you can. So I'm going to send you the link to this, this Thinking Ahead Roadmap, along with that ICOD folder, so that you can have access to these things as part of your IRTA membership and because AMBA cares about making sure that you understand how to get your financial house in order. All right, talking about financial house in order. When we study the biggest threats to retirees and their retirement, you've saved up all your life, you've got a really a, a pension that's, that's not gonna go down. I know there's some challenges in Illinois, but uh, you know a pension system that's out there for you, there are five major threats that you have to your nest egg. One is taking care of elderly parents. That could be you as the elderly parent or you taking care of your elderly parents. The death of a spouse without life insurance, boomerang children, those adult children who move back in with you and eat up expenses you weren't intending to, a medical crisis or overexposure to the stock market as you age. And I think we all know that this past couple of years has been not a fun one when it comes to the stock market. You can all think back, you know, 15 years or so ago in 2008, 2009, when we had the big housing crash, the stock market crash, if you'd have retired right at that point and you had all of your money in the stock market, you lost it overnight, almost 50%. Fortunately, it's grown back over time. Some people don't have that time to grow their money back. And so as we age, it's more important to keep protecting our nest egg in an environment that doesn't cause us to lose a lot of money in the stock market or any money in the stock market because we need that money to live on as we go forward. You know, it's hard to have a year like we had last year, which is the worst year in the stock market in 20 years or since, uh, since 20, uh, 2008, went down nearly 20% on the top of all the inflation that's going up. So your purchasing power is dropping as well. You can't just throw it over into a CD or a savings account at the bank because they're not paying anything to outstrip the inflation. So what do you do? 
when you're losing money in your nest egg that you're going to need for all of your years of living, is there an option out there? And fortunately, IRTA has endorsed a tax deferred asset protection plan that allows you to protect your nest egg that doesn't expose it to losses in the stock market. But if the stock market gains, it goes up. So you never lose money. You can only gain money in it. The thing I like about this plan for most people is there are some long-term care benefits as well. That if you need long-term care, there are some provisions that can pay you out specifically for long-term care, double up your payments, things like that. There's no medical requirements for this plan. It protects a portion of your nest egg from stock market exposure and keeps you from losing money and keeps you more importantly sleeping well at night. I'm going to show you how to get information about that as we go forward as well. Then we've had some conversations and some questions about required minimum distributions. As IRTA members age, they get closer to the magic age numbers where the government says you owe us some of that money back that you've saved. And this is how the government gets their money through required minimum distributions. This is not your pension plan. This is not a Roth IRA or anything that you've got just in a savings account. We're talking about individual retirement accounts, your 403B accounts that you maybe set up when you were a teacher, a 401k or a 457 plan if you were an administrator, those type of things. That's what we're talking about when the government says you have taken money and put it into a savings account, tax deferred, you didn't pay taxes on it when you took it out. Now it's time to pay the government. Now it's time to take that money out. So how this works, RMDs are based on a portion of your total account based on your age. That amount grows as you get older from year to year. And it's based on the amount of the balance of your account from the previous years. Now this is where the government has made some significant changes and it may trip some of you up as you go forward. If you were age 70 and a half prior to 2020, you had to start taking required minimum distributions from your tax deferred accounts. COVID hits and the stock market drops like a rock. And so the government says, you know what? People need some time to try to build that back up or they don't need to be required to take it out right now. So they move the age to 72. Then the SECURE Act last December when it passed, didn't do a lot of great things for retired educators, but it did do something nice for those who were uh, still have some money out there in a nest egg. And se they said that if you turn 73 now in 2023 or beyond, that's when you have to start taking your RMDs out. And you have to take your first RMD by April 1st of the year after you turn 73. So if you turn 73 this year, you don't have to take your first RMD out until April 1st of next year but then you've got to take another one out in December 31st of next year as well. So every year you have to take one out by December 31st. And how this works, again, let me put a disclaimer out here. What we're talking about is general in nature. This may not apply to your specific tax situation. I highly encourage you to consult with your tax consultant, talk with Gary and Nancy, talk about your situation and which route you should go to get um, someone to help you with this. But the IRS has a table. It's based on the aggregate of all of your IRA type accounts, your 40, uh, um, your individual IRAs, those type of things. It's based on the balance from the previous years. If you have a 401k, a 403b, and a, or a 457 plan, and I think most teachers probably have a 403b plan that they saved up in, that has to be considered separately. So again, this is why you need a tax professional, professional to do this for you. But say you and your spouse have IRAs and they total up to $225,000, then depending upon your age, the IRS applies an age factor and your taxable required minimum distribution is $8,200. That is not what you owe the IRS. That amount is what is added to your gross income that you have to take out of those tax deferred plans. It could impact the taxes that you owe. It could impact your deductions and it could impact your Medicare premiums. So it's important that you get this right. So I encourage you to consult with a tax professional. But there are some good news because some people ask us, what do you do with RMD or how does this work? Well, let me give you a couple of things you need to consider to watch out for. If you just do nothing and stick your head in the sand, you could be penalized 25%. Well, the benevolent government and all their benevolence to us lowered this from 50% to 25% this year. So that's nice. 
you can determine where you take your IRA RMDs from. If you had an account that's performing better, do you want to leave your money there and not take it from there? Do you want to take it from a worse performing fund? You can decide to do that. You can decide to take it out monthly or annually, however you want to. If you want the fund company, take the taxes out or you wait and do it at the end of the year, it's your call. But the one thing that I want to make sure that you have to watch out for, do not rely on your fund manager or your insurance company to do this for you, for those that manage your funds. They don't get penalized if they don't do that. You get penalized if those funds are not taken out, if your RMDs are not taken out. And then depending upon how your uh, accounts are set up, or if you've got a younger spouse that's much younger, there are some different requirements for RMDs out there. Some things you need to watch out for. Where we do get a lot of educators that tell us, a retired educator says, hey, my pension is good. I've saved up money. My expenses are low. The government's forcing me to take out these RMDs. What do I do with them if I don't really have to spend them on my everyday expenses? Well, I can tell you, Nancy and Larry and Gary and I hope we run into that situation when we retire, that we don't have to use our RMDs right now. One of the few things that you can do with your RMDs is you can use that to provide for your long-term care. Take that money, put it into a long-term care plan. Depending upon how you do it, there may be some tax advantages to doing your long-term care with your RMDs, and you don't have to pay taxes on that. But again, talk with your tax professional. You can fund a life insurance policy to leave a legacy to your grandchildren, your kids, your school, whatever you want to that way. You can convert those RMDs to a Roth IRA and pay your taxes. And then you don't have to worry about taxes in your Roth IRA until you're ready to take it out in the future. There are some big, big changes coming next year for Roth IRAs that are not used and how you can transfer those assets to family members. But again, that's a change coming in 2000 and, uh, or 2024, and that can be a real big thing for Roth IRAs. So again, check with your tax consultant on that. You can put it into a non-qualified tax plan, like I said, just throw it back into something else that you've already paid the taxes on. You can use it to fund the grandkids' uh, college expenses, the 529 plan, or you could make a qualified charitable contribution. If you are already giving money to a qualified charitable organization, a church, um, a charity, something like that, 501c3, you may be able to do direct transfers without having to pay taxes. So it's kind of another neat way to avoid some of the taxes that may be required on your RMD. So again, a big disclaimer, we're all recording this. I'm not telling you this is what you should or shouldn't do. Please check with your professionals as you go out there as well. The reason why we bring this conversation to you is, especially when it comes to your nest egg, you've got to prepare for many, many more years of living expenses. As we age, studies show we're going to get older. I mean, it sounds kind of oxymoronic, but once we reach age 65, a significant portion of us are going to live until our 90s, especially women. And the impact of inflation on our spending power, medical changes, spouses passing away, long-term care needs, that's going to cause us to change how we live our standard of living. If you prepare properly now with IRTA, with AMBA, there are ways that you don't have to worry about these things and you can sleep more peacefully at night. All right, I'm going to show you how you can get that information in just a moment. I want to touch on some freebies, some benefits that you have through the Passport program. You can get all of these benefits out there at myambadiscounts.com. Now, at the end of this webinar, I'm going to send all of you the ICOD checklist, the link to the Thinking Ahead Roadmap from AARP, and I'm going to send you the link for automatic registration in the free passport program, as well as the tutorial on how to get this on your phone. But right now, for those of you who are looking to get healthy, GNC all across the country is offering 15% off their supplements and their vitamins. Then there's several different programs for healthy living, the Calm app, stuff like that all sorts of equipment, bikes, healthcare equipment, things like that, uh, physical fitness equipment are out there at discounts at Passport. Then from a financial perspective, your tax prep services are offering sizable discounts. And then if you're wanting to get, you don't have a trust or a will or medical power of attorney, you can do that as well. Get those things taken care of and make your money stretch further because of your membership in IRTA. Again, this is a free service, a free benefit to you by being a member of IRTA. Your investment in your membership in IRTA protects your biggest asset, your pension. These other things are just freebies on top of that, just ways to make your money stretch further and get more value out of your IRTA membership. I highly encourage you, because of the changes that have taken place with Medicare this year, 
because of the changes that are taking place with state health plans, pensions, things like that, do your benefits checkup every year. Just like I told you, go see your life insurance or your, uh, your auto and home insurance uh, insurance agent. Also get your benefits checkup. Schedule that today. I'm going to show you how to do that in just a moment. Just a couple of quick reminders before we wrap up here. We've scheduled a year-long series of webinars. We're going to be mostly on Wednesdays at 10 o'clock, unless otherwise noted. We'll let you know about that. We've got the basics of long-term care coming up 1st of February. We're going to delve into all the ins and outs of long-term care, what it is, what it isn't, how it works with Medicare, how it doesn't work, and help you understand what your options are. We're going to talk about the passport program, all about that early in March, so that if you've got any spring break travel or you've got some plans that you want to do, we'll teach you how to get all the discounts, the freebies, get it set up on your phone as well. We're going to talk about the most popular benefit that uh, IRTA members your dental and vision plans in April on Saturday, the 13th of May. Now, I know most individuals on this call today are retired. I want you to think of one person that's still teaching, that hasn't yet retired, that needs to know about their IRTA benefits, what IRTA does for them, and what things they need to think about before they retire. We're going to be having a Saturday pre-retirement seminar webinar. They can hop on for 45 minutes to an hour, learn all about how to get started, even if they're two or three years away from retirement. It's important to understand to prepare now. And then we're going to break down that conversation about protecting your nest egg and go through those five biggest threats in more detail, show you some numbers, show you some solutions, and help you understand how better to do that. So continue to check for your emails out there with IRTA, the website, get involved and get enrolled and get in on these educational calendar on your, uh, on your calendar as well. Please, please, please tell your friends about this webinar series. This is a great way to go out and introduce a retired teacher that you used to work with that's not a member of IRTA to the services that IRTA provides because these are the type of valuable programming that your association does for you beyond the legislative advocacy, beyond the legal work to protect your pensions and your health care plans. They want to make sure that you're prepared to go into your retirement years with full confidence and peace of mind. So let your friends know about these webinar series here. Okay, I'm going to open it up to Q&A right now. If you have questions, drop it into the Q&A feature up there. We can monitor that if it's something, again, specific to your situation. We will answer you directly back that way. If it's something that is um, beneficial for the whole group to know, we'll address that question as well to the group. We'll stop and have that conversation that way. I want you to grab your smartphone. We talked about a lot of things today that you may have questions about. How do I protect my nest egg? I didn't realize that Medicare and healthcare plans didn't cover these certain things. How do I understand about long-term care? All you've got to do is take your smartphone, open up your camera feature, hover over that QR code, just like we do in restaurants these days, a little form will pop up. You simply hit your finger on there. In this form, you can populate it with the information that you have there. It will come back to Gary and Nancy, and they can give you a call. They can reach out to you via email. They'll leave their phone number and set up a time to talk with you about all these specific questions that you have. If you're on an iPad or on your smartphone and you can't do this, simply email me, john, J-O-N dot green at A-M-B-A dot info, and I'd be glad to connect you with Gary and with, um, with uh, Nancy as well. So, okay. Um, if you've got questions, drop them into Q&A. We've already got people that are uh, sending in their QR code requests that way. Larry, is there anything that, uh, that you want to share with the, the IRTA group today, just talking about how your team can be out with their units across the state and help them understand some of these issues? Um, sure, yeah, uh, so you can hear me okay. Um, yeah, it's really exciting. First of all, um, this, these type of webinar, this, these series are, I think are just gonna be terrific, you know, moving forward for, for your membership and for potential of bringing in a lot of new members to IRTA. Um, I just wanted to mention though, that, you know, uh, Gary and Nancy are really, um, you know, committed to helping out um, your local units. Many of the local units, I know it's been, uh, they're finally, you know, getting back together again. And, um, you know, we want to be able to bring these kind of things to you live as well and in person. So um, they've got several agents out in the field 
that are very qualified to be able to come out there and just maybe talk about one particular one program in particular. So um, really excited about that. And uh, yeah, if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to them. Thank you, Larry. So thank we did you. have a quick we did have a question that came in from Donna. She asked about that medical transportation as far as Medicare, how that's covered. The one thing about Medicare, they will put in their guide, that Medicare and you guide out there, they'll put what's called qualifying language. It will say, we may cover emergency medical transportation, or we have the right to review it, even if your doctor recommends it. And where we see this is in a couple of ways. We see this that say your neighbor finds you in the front yard that you've passed out in the front yard for whatever reason. They don't know what's wrong with you. They call 911, ambulance comes, picks you up and takes you there. It could have been dehydration and the ambulance takes you to the hospital, but Medicare reviews it and says, you know what? You could have probably had that neighbor drive you or an Uber could have taken you and they deny the claim. Most often Medicare will pay usually 20% of a ambulance ride. And so that leaves us with 80%. And so that's where those expenses come in. Sometimes, especially in rural parts of the state of Illinois, we will see you may get transported to the hospital, but that hospital is not a level one or level two trauma center. You may have to fly into Bloomington or somewhere else to be taken care of. So again, Medicare has this wishy-washy language. I call it qualifying language. Usually what it comes down to, they'll pay 20% and we're left with the 80% balance. That's where that medical transportation plan, and Jim Bachman, your executive director, is such a huge advocate for the medical transportation coverage that allows you to have peace of mind that you have no expenses if you need it locally, across the country, across the world, and there's some new expanded coverages that are out there now that will cover grandkids that are traveling with you, fun stuff like that, so uh, it's something like that as well, so. Um, okay. Oh, so Donna, you were talking about Medicare coverage through the MASA program. That's the special program that, that, that AMBA offers IRTA members. Then that's where if Medicare pays a portion of it, MASA picks up the rest of it. You've got nothing to worry about as well there. So hopefully that answers your question, Donna, in that regard. So again, thank you very much for that. If you've got other questions, feel free to uh, drop those into q and I'm going to stop recording right now.